I am so excited about today's video. We are gonna talk all about how you can address redness in your skin and also rosacea. This video has been a really long time coming and I've done a ton, a ton, a ton of research. I'm super excited to share with you five things that you can look for in your skincare that can help you if you experience redness in your skin, even if it has nothing to do with rosacea. And then also, if you do have rosacea, some suggestions, some over the counter things that you can look for that can help to alleviate not only the redness and the erythema, but also maybe the papules and the pustules that look like acne. Today's video is in collaboration with one of my nearest, dearest, and oldest friends on YouTube. We have been friends since we each had well under 5,000 subscribers, and she is the most lovely lovely, supportive human. I hope that if you are a subscriber of mine, that you will consider visiting Anne at Anne P Makeup and More. I'm gonna put her channel in the description box. She covers everything beauty. She is in the mature beauty world and she tells it like it is. She is as real as they come. She is a beautiful, kind human being and I would love it if you visited her channel and subscribed to her. And she is gonna cover some other skin conditions and the best ingredients to look for. So it isn't gonna be all redness and rosacea. So you're gonna get a bunch of other information in her video, which will be linked in the description box also. So let's get into this. First things first, let's talk a little bit about rosacea. Basically, if you experience redness, especially in the center of your face, if you experience flushing that doesn't seem to go away way. If you experience a background kind of vascularity, something they call superficial telangiectasia, superficial blood vessels that, you know, maybe they come forward, but then they don't go away for a really long time. Maybe you have something that looks like acne, but it's not acne. Maybe you're menopausal and you get hot flashes and all of a sudden you're red for a long, long time after your hot flash. Maybe you've noticed that spicy food or the sun makes you red and it doesn't go away. All of those things could mean that you have rosacea. So the first thing that I do wanna say is that it's not the best idea to get all of your information, of course, from YouTube. So I'm going to recommend that it's a really great idea to visit a dermatologist and get an actual diagnosis. Okay. So what can we do if those things apply to you? First of all, you can look for these ingredients. Number one, we're gonna talk about colloidal oatmeal. Now, colloidal oatmeal is anti-inflammatory and it is also helpful with bacteria. It's very, very soothing and it can help with redness. So if you are somebody who has redness in general and it may not even be related to rosacea, colloidal oatmeal can very much be your friend. It is a soothing, soothing ingredient that has been around forever and is essentially from grinding up oats and making it into a powder. That powder is then used in cosmetics. And I just noticed recently, and I put this on Instagram, that Aveeno actually has come out with a line of oatmeal products. It's like three products. If I can find them online, I will definitely link them in the description box. I found them at Walgreens, so you might wanna look for them in your local drugstore. But I have to tell you, they looked extremely interesting and very, very promising. So I have a recommendation for oats with Aveeno, which is awesome because it's over the counter, it's affordable, and the ingredient decks looked great. The second ingredient that I'm gonna recommend that you look for is licorice. Now, licorice is one of those ingredients that I've talked about on this channel ad nauseum because it can be really, really helpful for hyperpigmentation. But part of the reason why it's helpful for hyperpigmentation is because it's anti-inflammatory. Inflammation has a large role in rosacea and also in redness in general. So if we can control inflammation in our skin, we can control some of the redness or hopefully control some of the redness. Licorice is also incredibly soothing. So you want to look for licorice in your products in general. It's just an amazing ingredient that I love to see anytime in any ingredient deck for a multitude of reasons, but especially for redness and for hyperpigmentation. 
The next couple of ingredients are probably going to be my very favorite for this whole video. And that is going to be number one, azelaic acid. Now azelaic acid is an acid that's derived from grain and it can be incredibly helpful for hyperpigmentation. It is anti-inflammatory. It's incredibly helpful for rosacea, for the papular and the pustular type of rosacea. It can be helpful for acne, and it's just an amazing ingredient that now is able to be found over the counter. I do have some azelaic acid uh, products that I'm gonna share with you so you can kind of see the consistency. Something that you really, really need to know about azelaic acid is that it takes a while to work. So even if you went and got a prescription, which one of the prescriptions is called Phenacea, you need to give it time to work. It may take months for it to actually really affect your skin and work, so you have to be patient. But there are now over-the-counter products from The Ordinary, from Paula's Choice, that have 10% azelaic acid, which is lower than the prescription percentage of 15 or 20%, but still can be very, very effective in treating acne, in treating inflammatory rosacea, in treating background redness, hyperpigmentation, post-inflammatory, inflammatory hyperpigmentation left from acne marks, acne scars, azelaic acid can help with acne scars. It's an absolutely incredible ingredient, but what you need to know is if you experience redness, if you have rosacea, if you have acne, if you have post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from acne, if you have acne scars, azelaic acid is an ingredient. It is something that should be in your mind in your skincare arsenal for sure. Now, the next ingredient is an oldie bit of goodie and it is sulfur. Now, if you went to the doctor and you talked to them about rosacea specifically, there are essentially three, there might be four now, there might be four now, I'm not a doctor, um, products or prescriptions that are available one of them is, I'm going to mispronounce it, but it's metrazonazole or I'm going to have to read it, you guys, because I always mispronounce this one, but it's metronaz, oh my gosh, metronaz, metronida, metronidazole, meton, oh my gosh, it is absolutely impossible to pronounce, metronidazole, metronidazole, <laughs> metro, metronidazole, why can't I say that word, metronidazole, metronidazole it's impossible but you get the idea there is a prescription that is i'm going to put it on the screen i'm going to put it on the screen because it's impossible to pronounce there is a prescription for that there's also a prescription that includes sulfur and then there's a prescription for azelaic acid so what's really really cool is that we can find sulfur in over-the-counter products that can be very very helpful for not only rosacea that includes pustules and papules the acne looking type of rosacea, but it can be really, really helpful for acne as well. Sulfur is one of those ingredients that is just incredible and it's really not talked about very often. And frankly, because I do not have rosacea myself, I really wasn't paying that much attention to sulfur in general. And the more and more I investigate sulfur, I am like, okay, if you have rosacea, especially if you have the kind that looks like acne, or if you have acne, you might want to get some sulfur into your skincare arsenal. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about is going to be laser and light therapy. Now, some of this might be going in and seeing a practitioner, of course, and that can be very, very helpful because they can determine the type of laser, the type of light that might be best suited for whatever your skin condition is. But it's important to know that there are at home remedies, at home devices that may be helpful. The first one is going to be IPL. You guys have heard me talk about Faustina on this channel a bunch. I use it primarily for hyperpigmentation. It has helped to fade hyperpigmentation on my face. I have before and afters that I have shared. It has also helped friends of mine, which I'm gonna share on the screen, reduce broken capillaries on their face, which is vascular superficial telangiectasias that you can see on the skin. The Faustina IPL has helped with that. And then I've had friends that have said that it has helped with their overall 
redness. It can also help with something called poikiloderma of savat, which is basically sun damage that can cause like an atrophy of the skin, a redness, a hyperpigmentation. IPL can be fantastic for that as well. In fact, that is a video that's coming very, very soon. We are going to talk about that type of redness, that type of skin condition and what you can do to treat it. That's coming, but Faustina can help with that as well as of course, in office IPL can greatly help with that also. The light actually targets what are called chromophores. They are targets in the skin, whether that is the melanin or it is the blood vessels, and it helps to get rid of them. Now, of course, your blood vessels are going to regrow. They're gonna come back. You're gonna see these things re-emerge. And the cool thing about Faustina is that you get a lot, a lot of flashes per lamp. So you really can use this device for a very, very, very long time before you have to purchase an additional attachment that can be used for a very, very long time after that. So it is a fantastic device that I have recommended for a very, very long time. The other device that I do wanna mention that is recent for me that can be helpful is this little guy. It's a hot and cold device. I found it on Amazon and I bought it because not necessarily for rosacea, but if you're somebody who just gets warm and you wanna cool down your skin, sometimes having, you know, like cool spoons, cool, I've talked about this for a long time, those cool ice rollers, you could have a cool mask with the uh, silicone beads in it that you keep in the fridge that you can put on to cool down your face. This is a device that will cool down your face with this little part right here. It also has a warming feature and it has a sonic vibration feature and it is not expensive because frankly, it isn't some super high tech device. What it does is pretty simple, warms up and vibrates your face or cools down and vibrates your face. And the cool down and the vibration for somebody who can get flush is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. It's wonderful for puffiness. It's wonderful for redness. It's really, really helpful. I am digging this little device that is not very expensive at all, because like I said, it isn't revolutionary. It's just cold and it stays cold because it's charged. So it's really, really cool. It's also amazing to use over a face mask. So like a sheet mask and then the cool is incredible. I absolutely love it. So this is something to consider if you have redness. Now, if you have rosacea, you do need to be careful with anything that heats you up or anything that way too much cools you down, like the, the extremes of temperature. So I would say that if you have rosacea, be careful with any device that's gonna heat up your skin or way cool down your skin. I don't feel like this is like ice. It's not that cold, it's just cooling, which is really, really comfortable, pleasant, and soothing, especially first thing in the morning. It's absolutely incredible for somebody like me who's puffy and I can get a little bit of redness. It's a wonderful little device. Let's talk about a few things that you can purchase over the counter without going and getting a prescription that might help with redness or rosacea. Number one, we talked about azelaic acid. Now we have Paula's Choice. This is absolutely one of the most popular suggested products from you guys to me. Remember that azelaic acid can help to decrease inflammation. It can help with hyperpigmentation. It can help with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So the dark marks left after a trauma, that's usually acne. We have an acne mark that we maybe mess with, or even if we don't, lots of times, Lots and lots of times people with acne, especially of certain uh, tones, skin tones, when the acne goes away, even if they never touched it, it'll leave a mark. Azelaic acid can help with that kind of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Azelaic acid is antimicrobial and it also helps with cellular turnover. So it can kind of help with the texture of your skin and just the clarity and the overall you know, tone of your skin. My understanding from a lot of feedback from lots of conversations is that all of the products on the market, this one included, the texture is less than desirable for under makeup. I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna test it, of course, during the day under makeup. This is the one from Paula's Choice. So it's, it's kind of thick, and I could see where maybe that's not something that I'm gonna want to add to my daytime 
routine, but I can definitely see adding it to my nighttime routine. Now I do want to show you another one that is super, super affordable. And I bought this quite a while ago and I just haven't gotten it into my routine yet, but it's by The Ordinary. This is also another azelaic acid 10%, just like the, the one from Paula's Choice. So it's another really, really affordable 10% azelaic acid option. Let's look at the texture of this one, you guys. It's very similar. So this is the texture of the Ordinary. I hope you can kind of see that it's pretty thick, pretty heavy. Once again, probably not going to want to put that on during the day. Personally, I'm not going to want to add that into a layer, but I think at night who cares, right? I mean, at night I can layer in something a little bit heavier and not worry because I'm not trying to add makeup or anything like that over it. So that is the ordinary here is, do you see how that's the Paul's choice? See how it's still just sitting there. So I definitely do think that that's a downside of a lot of these azelaic acid products, at least the ones that I've looked into same for the ordinary. I can still feel it and see it. It's not like it's soaking into my skin or anything like that. So it's probably a nighttime type of product. Now onto another one that I just picked up. So I have absolutely no feedback for you, but I'm very, very intrigued by the ingredients and I will definitely be, um, testing it out for you, but it is called touch bright and clear cream. Now you guys know I'm always on the hunt for the next best and brightest, if you will. This one is actually as lake acid, 10%. So same as the Paula's choice and the ordinary, but this one also has 5% niacinamide. Now niacinamide is vitamin B3. Vitamin B3 is helpful for so many things. It's helpful for your barrier function. It's helpful for your pores. It can definitely be helpful for rosacea and it can be helpful for redness as well. Some people, a very, very tiny amount of people flush from niacinamide. So of course that is not ideal, but most people benefit benefit greatly from niacinamide. I'm sorry if you're one of the people that can't use niacinamide, because I know that some of you out there that watch can't, but for the vast majority, niacinamide vitamin B3 is an amazing ingredient and 5% is the sweet spot. It is helpful for pigmentation. It is helpful for redness. It's helpful for your barrier function. It's helpful for the appearance of your pores. So niacinamide is a fantastic ingredient. This also has 3% kojic acid. Kojic acid is typically derived from mushrooms and can be helpful as a pigment inhibitor. So it helps for brightening the skin and it helps with browns. And then this has tranexamic acid, 3%, 3% tranexamic acid has been shown in studies to be as good equivalent wise as hydroquinone at 4%. So I'm really, really excited about this one. You guys, I haven't used it yet, so I have to report back. So please don't buy it watching this video, but know that I will be giving you a review soon. It looks like this and it's actually a very lightweight gel feeling. It's actually a really, really pleasant texture. You guys, so I could see using that in the morning as a pigment inhibitor. And that is the 10% as lake acid. So, so far of the three as lake acid products that I am testing here for texture, this one that I just showed you is the only one of the three that I would use during the day. And it is again called touch bright and clear, but I'll be, I will be testing this and I will re be reporting back probably in maybe 45 days and try and give you a good review of this product, but it looks really, really promising to me. Now, some other things that you can do if you know you have rosacea, if you've been diagnosed and you know you have rosacea, there are things that you can get over the counter that can be helpful. Once again, I want to reiterate that talking to your dermatologist is really, really helpful because there are things like oral antibiotics. There are things like steroids that can be very helpful with rosacea, but it absolutely warrants a conversation with a dermatologist. Something else that I think that is very important to, to note is that topical steroids can cause a rebound effect if you stop using them. I read a really, really interesting book last year about this re rebound redness that can happen when you try to get off topical steroids. So I do as a lay person want to caution you if you are considering long-term use of steroids to combat 
rosacea to really, really investigate rebound redness before you set off on that course, just as a lay person, just as a suggestion. That said, if you've talked to your derm and you know you have rosacea and you're looking for some over-the-counter recommendations, I have a couple. Number one is going to be a product called Prosacea. This one is actually sulfur. We talked about sulfur being one of the prescription type ingredients that dermatologists will prescribe. It's actually a combination of sulfurs. I'm actually gonna send this to a friend who actually does have rosacea and she's gonna test it out for me and let me know how it works for her. So this one would be really great for those of you who have rosacea that has accompanying pustules or papules because the sulfur can be really, really helpful to clear out the pore and it is antimicrobial, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory. So, so sulfur is just a really fantastic ingredient for that type of rosacea. It can help with that background erythema, that background redness as well. And that in turn can also help with the edema that can come along. We haven't even touched on that, but that's the swelling of the face that could come along with the additional redness. All that blood coming to the surface can bring along with it some swelling. And if you can reduce the blood, you can reduce the swelling. So sulfur can be really, really helpful. This is a product you can get over the counter. The next thing is a product called Procure. Now this comes in an actual product, like a in a bottle. When I was younger, I had really red cheeks and I always would use a green primer. You know, lots and lots of skin, like makeup lines make green primers because they're very, very translucent. And basically what it does is it just very subtly, translucently, uh, color corrects the red in your skin. So you could definitely look for that just in your makeup. This line called Procure, they actually make a product that does have green in it. That's in the bottle. This is their sheet mask. The main thing in this sheet mask is licorice. Now we've talked about licorice. Licorice is soothing. It's anti-inflammatory. It's antimicrobial. It is a fantastic uh, pigment inhibitor and I love it. So this would be a really great kind of rescue mask. If you are someone who, you know, you're going to go out and you just want to calm your skin. You want to get as much of the redness just chilled out as possible. In fact, this mask combined with this on cool, amazing, just amazing for soothing the skin because licorice is soothing, 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 anti-inflammatory and helps with pigment. So this combo on cool would be incredible. So that's another recommendation for sure. The last recommendation is going to be from Cetaphil. This is just a nighttime moisturizer, you guys, but it does contain licorice. This also has ceramides. Now ceramides are going to be helpful because they're going to reinforce your barrier. And if your barrier is intact and it is working properly, it means that it's going to hold water in your skin more effectively. If water is kept in your skin more effectively, then your skin is going to perform its duties better. Okay, so dehydrated skin, skin with a compromised barrier is not gonna work as well. It's going to be more sensitive. It is going to be more reactive. It is going to be more dehydrated, dry. It's going to look worse. So ceramides are just a wonderful thing to see in any product. The other thing about this one, you guys, is it's fragrance-free and it's non-comedogenic. Fragrance-free is important if you are sensitive because fragrance is one of those things that can trigger redness. The very last thing, probably the very most important thing to talk about is sun protection. It's really, really important to protect yourself from the sun if you have rosacea or if you just have redness in general, because the sun can cause a lot of that to begin with, solar damage. Interestingly, UVB rays, we talk all the time on this channel about sun protection. We talk about broad spectrum sun protection. We talk about UVA rays, which are the aging rays, the long rays that contribute to pigment. They contribute to, you know, um, hyperpigmentation and they also contribute to skin cancer. Well, the UVB rays are the burning rays and those rays can contribute to redness and they also can contribute to skin cancer. So it's really important to get a broad spectrum sun protection on board, 
But if you are sensitive, you have redness in your skin or you have rosacea, you probably want to look for a mineral sunscreen. So you want to look for something that is zinc and titanium dioxide. Those are going to be less irritating than your chemical sunscreens. And my favorite of all time at this point is going to be the CeraVe. This is their hydrating SPF with a tint. Now it isn't going to cover every single person's skin tone, but what's kind of nice about this is because it's tinted, it does cover quite a wide range because there's no white cast. So you may be able to get away with this if you are lighter or darker than this actual tint because the no white cast, and you might be able to, you know, fudge it one way or the other. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It is all mineral, you guys. And the cool thing about this one too, is that it has iron oxides. We're going to go through that in a video, but iron oxides actually are partially responsible for the tint that you see in this CeraVe and iron oxides help to protect you from visible light. Visible light can contribute to hyperpigmentation. So if you can see your sunscreen, it can see and help and protect you from visible light, light that you see. So look for tinted sunscreens and look for tinted sunscreens that are mineral based. They can be very, very helpful if you have redness, if you have rosacea, if you have sensitivities, and they also can help you from, protect you from sun damage that could ultimately lead to hyperpigmentation, melasma, etc. Now, sun protection that's tinted is great, and if it has antioxidants, it's even better. Ceramides, sign me up, the CeraVe, also contains ceramides. So it's just a fantastic sun protection product. I would say it's best for normal skin, normal to dry or dry skin. If you're oily, oily skin, you may not like this product. And in that case, I would highly recommend the Dermatology Universal Tint SPF 46, which has high purity niacinamide in it. It's just sold out right now, so I didn't even want to talk about it because I didn't want anybody going looking for it and they can't find it. But if you're watching this video at a later date and it's in stock, it's absolutely lovely, as is the Elta MD UV Clear that is very, very similar to the Dermatology sunscreen. I'll link them both in the description box and I will put them on the blog. I hope that this video was helpful. I know we covered a very, very wide range, but I am going to go into so much more depth, you guys. We have so many other ingredients at our disposal that can help with redness. We've got things like Centella Asiatica and Allen Toen. There's green tea, beta-glucan, so many other things. Those are all going to be on the blog. I think that you're going to find so much information in this blog post. If you are someone who suffers from redness or rosacea, that it is a blog post that's a must, must read. I do hope that you will check it out. I will link it in the description box. There will also be free graphics that you can print that might be helpful in your day-to-day -day skincare operations. I also hope you'll visit Anne. It would actually be a personal favor to me if you visited her channel, gave her some love, say hello from me, and subscribe to her channel. You will not regret it. You will love her. I hope you guys are having a most wonderful Sunday, and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.